Trick Avenue. And then we'll take it higher. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Manish Chain or Mr. Jane, and you are watching Electric Avenue. This is episode number 21. This is the August 2024 wrap up of the Indian EV car scene. And as usual, we got four things we're going to cover. We're going to cover the monthly registration numbers. We're going to do any recent EV news and releases, which there are two big ones. Then we're going to do an EV car spotting. This is the Benz EQE 500. And last but not least, we're going to do a deep dive and we're going to do it on the Ola Electric recent event they had. They called it Sun Gulp 2024. So those are the four things we're going to cover in today's episode of Electric Avenue. So let's just dive right into the numbers for August 2024. As usual, these numbers are provided by evreporter.com. Definitely check out the website. They got a lot of amazing content. Their monthly magazine where these numbers are pulled from has got packed with information around the EV scene in India. And of course, the website has daily news bits about what's happening in India. But let's get to this graphic, which talks about the sales of August 2024 versus July 2024. And uh, at the top, no surprises. I say this every damn month. And it is Tata Motors. And as you can see here, they've got about 4,000 units versus last month. They had only 5,000. So almost a drop of 18%, which is really surprising. I'm not sure if that's because people were anticipating the new Curve.EV coming and they were kind of pausing whether they would want to buy the Nexon or this new Curve.EV, which by the way, we'll get to in the next section. Then of course, you've got MG Motors uh, also dropped by 15%. Mahindra Mahindra had 317 units, which is a big drop of almost 38% from last month. BYD, very surprising they had a drop. I've heard nothing but great things about the BYD seal. In fact, I recently met two people and they both were telling me how they want to buy the seal. 3.8 version, which is the super fast version, uh, which is the four door sedan. So getting, I'm hearing a lot of rave reviews about BYD. Then of course, down the list, you've got uh, BMW with 63. Now let's just change this so we can highlight the stuff. So let's just change this, let's change the color. So, Anyways, uh, so here you got uh, BMW with 63, you've got Hyundai with 39, you know, Mercedes with 48, all the way down. So, you know, really the, the main thing is you look at the totals here, uh, it's actually dropped by 20% uh, the July numbers versus the August 24 numbers. So that's actually pretty significant. I mean, it, yeah, it's only 1600 units, but that's the, the total universe for the four wheel passenger vehicles in India. So not really sure. Uh, you know, I think people are waiting for the new releases that are coming out, both from Tata, from MG, BYD. So there's actually a lot of competition, which is great for the consumer. Probably not as exciting for the manufacturers because they're going to have to now be more competitive, have better product offerings and likewise. And even Hyundai Motors is coming out with a couple more EVs uh, very soon. So those are the numbers for August 2024. So next up is EV news and the big launch. We've got two things to cover today. One is the Tata Curve.EV, the highly anticipated EV that is, you know, one notch above the Nexon EV, which is the number one selling EV in India. And then the second piece of news is all of the new Ola electric motorcycles. So let's first cover the Tata EV. As you can see here, the Curve EV looks really nice. <clears throat> You know, the back looks really, really stylish. On road, I'm still waiting to see how it actually looks on the road, but from the press photos, it looks pretty good. And a little bit of information about the car. So this is the fifth EV in the Tata lineup. The first was the Tagore, then the Tiago, then the Nexon, and then the Punch. And this is the fifth one. So it's a coupe SUV style. So that's a very uh, new style. So I think it was really, uh, you know, really made uh, popular by the, the Cayenne Coupe, the BMW X6. Um, but I believe the very first one was actually from General Motors with their Pontiac Az Aztec, which is one of the ugliest cars ever known to man. Uh, but that coupe style SUV is kind of really picking up. So this is offered in both a 45 and 55 kilowatt hour battery pack, zero to 100 kilometers in 8.6 seconds. And it's about 215 Newton meters of torque. Uh, pricing, 
I think they announced it, but I didn't really pick up on it. Um, you know, it's all over the internet, I'm sure. But you know, the one thing that I was really hoping that they would actually be using their own battery packs, because as you know, the batteries and the BMS systems of EVs are really the heart of the car. And it looks like they're still using the ones from Goshen, which is a Chinese company. Uh, so it still looks like they're still using the Goshen LFP battery packs. And since they're probably using their battery packs, they're probably using their BMS system. So I'm really waiting for them to kind of rewrite the entire software, bring it in-house, you know, and hopefully done by TCS and, you know, another group company and really bring up that level of quality on the EV side. So really here is the pricing. Uh, all the way from 17.5 lakhs all the way to 22 lakhs as you can see here and really it's competing against the MG ZS EV uh, even the BYD Atoll 3 has got a new uh, lower price point uh, so everybody's trying to compete in this space um, and looks great on the road uh, it is from the house of Tatas so people are kind of wondering about the quality control issues if they're going to persist or not um, but I definitely feel like, you know, at least Tata is kind of upping their game and kind of, you know, moving up the value chain and, you know, releasing higher level cars, bigger cars, more amenities, things like that. So I hope it continues. And the curve that EV is the first one from, uh, you know, from, from a bigger series. So the second piece of news is Ola Electric announced their motorcycle series called the Roadster series. Uh, this was during their very big event, which we will cover in the deep dive, but we'll at least talk about the automotive piece, uh, the, the motorcycles. They launched three, so not just one, but they launched three different variants of what they're calling the Roadster. So the very first, uh, the high-end version, I'm going from the top to the bottom. So the high-end version is called the Roadster Pro, as you can see here. Uh, you know, zero to 40 kilometers an hour in 1.2 seconds, top speed of 194, uh, you know, 105 newton meters of torque. It looks pretty cool. looks very futuristic, I must say. And the price point comes in at around 2 to 2.5 lakhs, depending on the kilowatt hour battery pack that you get. So that and it's uh, shipping, they're saying. It's going to be shipping uh, in Diwali 2025. So we're talking, uh, you know, a little more than a year from now. So all the products are going to be shipping next year and they're kind of doing a release now. So the first product that's going to ship is what they're calling the Roadster, which is their medium level version. Uh, and it does zero to 40 in 2.2 seconds. Uh, and the price points range anywhere from 1.05 lakhs to 1.4 lakhs. And that's going to be shipping in January. 2025. So very, very soon. I think they're taking pre-orders for all of these products. Um, and here they've got a little bit of information about the, uh, you know, the motors is 13 kilowatt motor. They've got various battery pack options, 3.5, 4.5, uh, and six. Then at the low end, they've got something called the Roadster X zero to 40 in 2.8 seconds. Uh, also has somewhat of a futuristic look. Uh, and then they've got uh, three variants of that, anywhere from 75,000 to 1 lakh. And, and this is also shipping in January 2025. So a lot of the products is going to be available very soon. So this is a, a quick highlight all the way from the Roadster Pro, as you can see here. Let me just highlight this so it makes it easier. So the Roadster Pro, uh, the middle version is the Roadster X, and then you've got the low end Roadster. And so they are really aggressively pumping out new products. Uh, and I expect more and more to come out of Ola Electric in the coming months and years. And that's really the news that we've got for August 2024. Two big launches, one on the automotive side and one on the two-wheel uh, scooter motorcycle side. And that's a wrap for the news. Okay, so here we are at EV Car Spotting. Uh, and this is the new Mercedes EQE 500. So this is the E-Class version. So this is uh, bigger than uh, the GLC, uh, or what, what, what I should call the EQC, and smaller than the EQS. So right in between, it's slotted. Uh, in fact, I saw this for the very first time when I was actually uh, in uh, Japan and thought it looked very cool. I have not seen one yet till I saw this about maybe two, three weeks ago on the road. 
So it definitely looks really nice. This is in a color called Primer Gray, I believe is what it's called. Uh, so yeah, it looks pretty cool on the road. Um, and uh, you know, this on-road pricing is around one and a half crore. So it is definitely spendy. Uh, still debatable if I'm a big fan of the EQs, the EVs from Mercedes. I think they're a little too curvaceous. Uh, they're, they're not great from my standpoint, but of course people do like them. I do see quite a few EQSs running around. So people that want the S class look or the S class size, but in a very, you know, EV looking type vehicle from Mercedes. But, uh, anyways, I thought this was kind of a cool thing to see on the road. Uh, like I said, after seeing it maybe two, three, uh, four or five months ago when I was traveling. So that's the Benz EQE 500. I uh, don't have a lot of stats. Uh, I was kind of looking for them, but you know, I didn't think there was anything too exciting to talk about, minus just the price point. Uh, but that's a wrap on EV car spotting. So I thought I'd do a deep dive uh, on the recent uh, kind of event that Ola uh, launched. It was called Sun Cup 2024. So it was like their big, big event, almost like an Apple type event, where they're going to launch a lot of new products. So I thought let's just cover uh, some of the highlights of that uh, two or three hour presentation that he gave. Um, I think this was done actually on August 15th, if I'm not mistaken. And so it was, you know, very, very well received, very nationalistic in, in nature. But, you know, one of the things that he's gotten a lot of flack for is kind of comparing his company against some of the bigger players, uh, calling it the fifth largest EV company by market cap. So if you look at it, you know, Tesla is at 651 billion. You know, right here, uh, let me just pick a different color. So if you look at Tesla's here and uh, Ola is down here at about 5.6 billion. Uh, funny thing is everybody gave him crap because he, if you look really closely, it's excluding China. And actually China has a lot of EV companies. So kind of disingenuous, but I think it just kind of shows you, he's trying to show the scale and how they compete. Uh, then, you know, he did another one saying, you know, the fourth largest EV company by revenue, you know, so Tesla does 95 billion, Ola Electric does 0.68 billion, which, you know, obviously you're trying to compare four wheelers versus two wheelers. So not really a good comparison. Um, I mean, I think they did pretty well in that regards, but of course, yet again, they are excluding China. So, you know, the truth is the other reason why I wanted to kind of talk a little about Ola is because I think he gets a lot of flack. A lot of people, you know, feel like, oh, he's just kind of selling a dream, but not really delivering. I mean, what he's actually trying to do is pretty hard, I believe. You know, it's not easy. He's not just taking something uh, from something else. He's actually now trying to build everything in-house. You know, he's built a factory in India. He's trying to do his own cells, all of that stuff. So I think he's trying to highlight what he's doing. So here he talks about, you know, we had talked about the three uh, Roadster series bikes that already came out. Uh, he's got something called a Sportster, which is coming, which would be faster. Then you've got a whole other set. You've got the sports ver versions, you've got the adventure, and then you've got the cruiser. So he's got a whole lineup of motorcycles coming in addition to all the scooters that he's selling. So he's got a lot of stuff happening. Maybe some people say he's doing a little too much, but you know, maybe that's just his style. He likes to juggle 50 fucking balls like Elon Musk. I don't know. So then they talked about, you know, the energy sector. They're building their own 4680 cell called the Bharat cell. So he kind of showed it, talked about the size of it. Uh, it's typical 4680, which is, you know, what Tesla is known for. So 4680 is just the, the, the shape and size of the cell itself. Um, and then the different chemistry everyone uses is different. Then, you know, he talked about the scooters. They've got Gen 3. They're on the Gen 3. They've got Move OS 5. And then, of course, the motorcycles they talked about. Uh, then, you know, he got into his cloud infrastructure, which blows my mind. So in addition to all the stuff he's doing on the automotive side, uh, then also on Ola Cab side, which is now being rebranded from Ola Cabs to Ola Consumer, he is now trying to compete against Azure and built his own cloud uh, platform and, you know, very India focused. So this is the first chip called the Bodhi One. Um, it's India's first AI chip coming in 2026. Uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, he also went, uh, he really kind of went against, I shouldn't say went against, but really kind of threw the gauntlet down when he kind of said, Ola Maps is overpriced and I'm coming out with something brand new called, uh, sorry, Google Maps is overpriced and he's coming out with something better called Ola Maps and it's going to be much cheaper. 
And so he's giving it free to developers for the next one year, two years. Uh, I'm sure it'll keep on going till he gets enough critical mass. And he's trying to make that the mapping provider of choice in India. Uh, and of course, people say because of that, uh, Google Maps dropped their pricing by 75%. Now, people say, you know, Google is a really large company. They must have had this in the pipeline. Who knows what? But because of him, you know, Google Maps dropped their pricing. And that's one of the biggest pricing uh, pieces to any last mile logistics cab riding is it's very expensive to do location based tracking, trying to find locations, things like that. Their API costs are really expensive. So, you know, you know, Bobish is like, you know, let me go after Google Maps and let me launch my own Ola Maps provider. And uh, to be seen, I've seen some of the Ola Maps uh, APIs and they look pretty good. Now we'll see how they actually are in production and see who's actually using it. Other thing is the listing happened finally. So uh, the, the share got listed on August 9th. It got listed at 76 rupees per share. Uh, and so when it opened up uh, on the NSC and BSC, it opened up at 76 and it ended the day at 91 rupees. So a fairly decent pop, which is great. Uh, and this is as of September 19th, uh, is trading at 111 rupees. So when you look at it, came in, it came out at around 76. If you look at where it is today, year to date, it's giving you around a 47% price increase, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, I, I, I don't know what people are expecting. Are they expecting a sure shot? Uh, that's the truth about equities. You know, some things you win, some things you don't. There is no such thing as a sure, uh, a sure shot. And when you're investing, you don't know. So, you know, is it a good investment? I'm not sure either, but I think it's it's worth taking a bet on him because he's done so much and some people don't like him, but I think he's very, you know, brash uh, trying to get things done. Uh, the other thing, I think it's a good buy, meaning you should definitely buy it, not bye bye, goodbye, ta-ta is because at some point they are probably going to include Ola Electric in this new uh, fund that they've created. So it's a, it's an actual tracking fund. And the fund is basically called the Nifty EV and New Age Automotive ETF. So they are taking different components that they feel are part of the EV and New Age Automotive and wrapping it together. So it's like an index fund, but it's around what they call a sectoral fund. So this is around the EV space. And at some point, obviously, they will have to bring Ola Electric into this fund, uh, into this index. And that means people will have to buy this stock to be a part of you know, the, the equity tracking in this uh, uh, sectoral ETF tracker. So if you look at it, of course, it's very it's right now highly correlated to the BSC 500 and uh, not surprising. So at some point there may be a breakup, but right now it's very, because funny enough, if you actually break down, like I did last month, we talked about the Nifty EV and New Age Automotive, I think nine or 10% of the index is Reliance. So very funny because I'm not really sure. They are coming out with a lot of new things, but I think Reliance typically is old school petroleum. Um, and of course they are gonna get into new age uh, automotive uh, technologies, whether it's battery making or things like that are charging, who knows. So this is something I'm gonna be tracking now on a monthly basis is how this index is going and how is it doing. But you know, at some point they will, like I said, include Ola Electric into that. So that's kind of a deep dive. It's not as intensive as I usually do my deep dives, but I think it was just kind of nice to do a quick overview of his event that he had uh, in August, talking about all the different products. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's doing a lot of stuff around the AI side. And I think it's a, it's a culmination of all the things he's been doing. So he's got really good, you know, obviously his mapping is great because he's got access to all the scooters. They're understanding traffic flows. Obviously all the pickups and drop ups he's done with Ola cabs over the years, he can kind of save that data and kind of offer it. Whether he's allowed to, I'm not sure. Let's see, there may be a, a, some sort of legal action from the different mapping providers out there. But that is kind of the Ola Sun Gulp 2024 in a nutshell. So that's kind of a wrap on the deep dive. And that is a wrap on episode 21 of Electric Avenue for August 2024. And I will see you next month. Till then, take care. Oh no, we're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. And then we'll